Hey there, Algebra. We are almost done with Unit 1. We are in Lesson 15. Um, let's warm up. So our student task statement says, each histogram shows the bowling scores for the last 25 games played by each person. Choose two of these people to join your, bowl your bowling team and explain your reasoning. So we have... Can't see them all at once. Well, let's see. Yeah. So I have four bowlers. Um, I'm looking at mean, median, standard deviations, and quartile range. And remember that there are a few things that talk about variability. And it's our standard deviation and our interquartile range. Okay, those really measure our variability. So our bowlers may have a few amazing scores, but if they're extremely variable, then they could have a really bad day and you would be unprepared. Um, gosh, if I look at person B, my mean is 31, my median is 129, and our variability is very low. So their score is fine. I like it. Pretty high, higher than mine. Um, and they have very little variability. And if we look here, I've got a 200 um, score, but my standard deviation and my interquartile range is pretty high. Okay, same here. Got a pretty high score, but those are pretty high too. You know, the mean and the median aren't that far off, person B, but we have way too much variability. Okay, look at this one. Amazing score, but standard deviation and interquartile range are still high, especially that standard deviation. Um, so personally, I like consistency over the hope that they do really well once. Um, so I would pick person B. And it's just a good discussion. There isn't a real right answer. I mean, there is a better answer than others, but we could argue different answers all the time. All right, <clears throat> so comparing marathon times. Mathematical purpose um, here, we're gonna compare measures of center and measures of variability. Um, so reading, all of the marathon runners from each of two different age groups have their finishing times represented in the dot plot, okay? all the marathon runners from two different age groups. Okay, so we have ages 30 to 39 and the finishing times, and then ages 40 to 49 and the finishing times. I have paper problems here, sorry. My binder's really full, so at the end, it doesn't turn, it doesn't flip very well. All right, so which age group tends to take longer to run the marathon? Explain your reasoning. Okay, if we look here, um, ages 40 to 49, you know, these are, that's my 380 minute mark. I have quite a few data points above 380 minutes. So I would say, if we're looking at number one, the 40 to 49 year old age group are slower. Okay, they're median their middle number appears to be larger. One second. It's just too hard to write while recording, so you can always push pause and write down what I'm writing. Um, so the 40 to 49 age group is slower because the median appears to be larger. The center of the data is going to be further right um, on this distribution. So if we found the median, I mean, if I just do a gut check, I bet the median is maybe over here somewhere. Where um, the 30 to 39 age group, the median may be, if I just do a gut check, maybe over here a little bit more. So the center of data is further right on the 40 to 49 age group. If we look at number two, which age group has more variable finish times? Explain your reasoning. Okay, I'll be right back. So what I wrote was um, the 40 to 49 year old data appears to be more variable because the data is much more spread out 
along the number line than the data for the 30 to 39 year olds. Their data is compact. Um, it has less of a range of small, the lowest time and the greatest time. So the IQR, IQR if we were to calculate it, would also be larger because the middle 50% of the data appears to be more spread out. Okay, we could calculate the IQR and we could assume that you know, the middle 50% of the data is more spread out, where that would be Q1, Q3, where the 30 to 39 year old, I mean, if we sort of guesstimated, that would be where the 50, 50 the middle 50% um, would be. Okay? So these are all, we're talking about measures of center and variability, okay? So we talked about the median in question one. It appears to be larger. The center of the data is further right. And then we talked about variability. Um, the data is more spread out, um, which makes it more variable. Now let's compare some measures. Um, so here we have some data sets. Determine the best measure of center and measure of variability to use based on the shape of the distribution. Um, so that's going to be the first thing we do. And then determine which set has the greatest measure of center. Which set has the greatest measure of variability. And explain. So you see there are eight different data cards here. Okay. So we're going to talk through each one. Oh goodness, there are even more. Um, yep, so this is going to take a bit of time, but we're only a few minutes into our lesson, so it's not a big deal. I'm going to see if I can spread these out a little bit so we can talk about them without trying to um, squish all the information into an answer. All right, we're going to see if this works. Here's a Desmos activity um, that follows right along with your lesson in the book. So we're comparing measures of center. Um, so this first one says determine the best measure of center and measure of variability to use based on the shape of distribution. Um, the mean and standard deviation or the median and interquartile range. So for this one I would do the mean and I honestly take some notes. Okay, this is the hard stuff, the stuff that's hard to remember. But <coughs> excuse me. Um, but the mean and standard deviation are appropriate since they are symmetric. So mean and standard deviation, and I'll write down, um, because they are symmetric. Okay. Um, now, which one would be the greatest center of measure, um, 1A or 1B? So we can say the mean distribution for 1A is greater since the center is to the right. And then the standard deviation for 1A is also greater since most of the data is further away. So here we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 from the middle. And, here we, and that's most of the data since we're bimodal. So most of the data is further to the right and the left. So that would have the greatest of, um, measure of variability. All right, I'll write that down really quick. Um, 1A is the greatest measure, goodness, greatest measure of center because it's to the right. 1B, 1A is the greatest variability because most of the data is spread out from the middle. As far to the right and left. Okay, let's try the next one. So here we have those two. So to determine the best measure of center and best measure of variability based on the shape. So here we're going to do mean and standard deviation again um, since they are symmetric. Okay. 
um, the mean for B is greater. So the greatest measure of center would be 2B since it's to the right. And then the standard deviation for 2A is greater. So we can write that. Um, 2B because it's further to the right and 2A my typing is fantastic isn't it um, because it's more spread out you can always push pause and write this stuff down I would recommend it all right 3A and 3B um, which one would be the best for the measure of center and variability. All right, so these aren't very symmetric. So we're going to go with median and interquartile range. Okay, that's why we're going to pick median and interquartile range. Now, which one has the greatest measure of center? So the median for, for A is going to be greater because um, we have more data to the right, so that would be 3A. And then the, um, yeah, the median for A is greater since the center is to the right. Let me write that down. 3A since the center is to the right of the center of 3B. And then which one has the greatest measure of variability? We're going to say the um, interquartile range for 3A. Yep, 3A is going to have the better, bigger measure of variability because it's more spread out. You guys are seeing how awesome of a typer I am. I'm actually a pretty good typer, but typist. <laughs> um, but I'm trying to multitask, which never goes goes well. So we're going to say 3A. So our measure of center is further to the right and um, variability is greater for 3A. Is that not one word? All right. Okay. Best measure, the best measure of center and best variability based on the distribution. Right, first, are we going to use the mean and standard deviation or the median and interquartile range? These are pretty symmetric, so we're going to use the mean and standard deviation. Um, the mean, well, let's say why, because more symmetric. And then which has the greater measure of center? We're going to say 4A because the data is shifted to the right more. And then which one is the greatest measure of variability? Hmm. Looks like B maybe. So here we're going from 90 to 110, but most of our data is in the middle. So that's not as variable. Here we're very uniform and symmetric. So our variability is going to be greater because we have more data spread out to the ends. So for B, because the data is more spread out. So we can say 4A and 4B. So we get everything more spread out. All right. Determine the best measure of center. Okay. Not extremely uniform. So I think we're going to pick median and quartile range. See how our whisker is a little stretched out for those two? Um, the median for 5A is greater, which we can see right there just by reading it. Oh, so let's answer this first because not symmetric. And then the greatest measure of center is going to be 5A because the median is to the right. And then the variability, we can just look at IQR. Here, 900 and 600, that's 300, IQR 300. Here, 650 and 450, that's 200. So our IQR is greater for 5A. So it's more variable. So 
so we can click 5a for both of them. Next. All right, determine the best measure of center and variability. Um, a political podcast has mostly reviews that either love the podcast or hate it. A cooking podcast has reviews that neither love, that neither hate or love the podcast. I don't like these. I like numbers. Numbers are easy for me to analyze. I'm going to read here. Um, 6A has greater variability since the values will be concentrated on the ends, will be bimodal. Um, for the political podcast, while the cooking podcast likely has values more clustered near the center because it's neither hate nor love. So the A, it's mo the reviews hate or love it. So that's going to be bimodal, you know, the, like that. 6B is neither hate nor love it. So if we neither hate nor love, you're going to have everything clustered in the middle. Okay. Um, so everything's going to vary. I think discussing the data and how it would turn out is valuable. Um, I'm having a hard time coming up with what to click though, so we're going to move on. 7A, B, and C. Stress testing concrete from site A has all 12 samples break at 450 pounds per square inch. Stress testing concrete from site B has samples break every 10 PSI starting at 450 PSI until the last core is broken at 560 PSI. Stress testing concrete from site C has six samples break at 430 PSI and the other six break at 460 PSI. This one is hard because you guys have probably very little idea of what we're talking about. Um, concrete, you can stress test it by pushing down on the concrete until it breaks. PSI stands for pounds per square inch, so you're going to press down on that concrete um, with so much weight, so many pounds pressing down per square inch of the concrete, one inch by one inch. Um, yeah, so we're going to say all three distributions are symmetric. And since they're symmetric, we can pick mean and standard deviation. Um, site B is going to have the greatest mean since the least value um, was 450. And it's greater than the mean for site C. So we can say um, B is the greatest mean since the least value for that distribution distribution is the mean for site A, which was 450. If you look at the and greater than the mean for site C, which was 445. The standard deviation For B will be greatest. Since A has a standard deviation of 0 psi and C has all of its data within fifteen psi of the mean. I'm doing great. And site B has four of the values within 15 PSI of the mean. That's a lot of data. Okay, the wordy ones are my least favorite, I will admit. I have an extra period there. All right. So that was it. Yep. So basically, how do we decide whether to use the mean or median? 
mean median was used when it was symmetric, when the data was symmetric. Okay. Yep, mean. Oh, no, 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 no. So the mean was used when, let's clear that up. That would be bad. The, med the mean was used when the, when the data was symmetric. The median was used for non-symmetric data. Okay, and I would pair the mean with the standard deviation and I would pair the median with the IQR. Yep, so mean standard deviation would be paired with um, symmetric data. And IQR non symmetric data. And I think that's where we're going to stop. How do you estimate variability when looking at data displays? Okay, how do you estimate variability? Well, we're going to estimate the center. Just by looking at it, you're going to estimate the center and then estimate how spread out it is. Okay, how spread out the data is. That's how you estimate variability. How do you determine what measure of center to use? Oh, I jumped ahead. Okay, when it's skewed, and I said earlier non-symmetric, what will you use? Can't type. Okay, so when it's skewed, how do you determine which? Measure of center though, Miss Carly, measure of center. So measure of center is either mean or median. Okay, we've already gone over that. I just got backwards. And then why is the mean the preferred measure of center for symmetric distributions? Why is the mean? Because in symmetric distributions, distributions, the mean and the median are equal. Remember, we talked about that earlier in the lesson. Okay, in symmetric distributions, the mean and the median are equal. Okay, the mean is preferred because it takes into account all of the values. Okay, it takes into account all of the values. And that's it. That actually, we're not going to go over. Because when I give you a quiz, I give you those questions. All right, good work today. That was a, a long ending, but very important to review.